This is Signature Gold. Stop TV. Stand by for transmission. This is Smithy.tv. I've eaten lots of food, I've had lots to drink, and then I went and took a piss. Then I turned on this podcast that is called Cast This! Cast This! Cast This! Cast This! We got the Black Dean Martin with us today. What's happening, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Cast List. I'm Ryan Goldhar. I am James Scott. And we have a special guest with us, uh, a very good friend of mine, yes. a long time, yes. uh, Umpo Quaho. What's going on, everyone? What's uh, going on, world? Yes, yes. And uh, he's going to be featured uh, in the coming year in Steven Spielberg's produced uh, Falling Skies. Right? No, no, not Falling Skies. Falling yeah, Skies. Yeah, Falling. It's Falling. I don't know him personally, but I heard I was in the show. They changed the name to Falling. And Fall, that's falling, yeah. Falling, falling Skies, yeah. Oh, falling it used skies. to be Fall Ends, guys. What, what they wanted, what they realized was apostrophe, nothing, doesn't cut it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had to go with ING just okay. to cover. You know, you know what, you know, it's just. And it's it. up to the person who says the title whether they want to add that apostrophe. Pretty much. It says Pretty guys much. from Toronto who can't say the word Toronto. Yeah, really. Right. Right. Toronto. 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 What is it, like a chutney? Toronto chutney? It's a very spicy sausage. It is. It's very spicy. Like <laughs> Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get the part in Fallen Falling? Falling Skies? Well, it was really cool. After audition for everything I, I, I get, i um, happy to do so. So I just went in one day, I think it was, and I'm not going to say who the casting director was because I can't remember right at this exact moment. And so <laughs> thank you for that, guys. I just got microphone punched in the mouth. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Marvel versus Capcom 4. Microphone hit. <laughs> no, so... <laughs> So, no, I just went in and auditioned for it, and uh, it was cool. Carl Franklin was in the room, so that was pretty righteous for me. Um, Red, got a call back, and then here we are, man, doing the show. It's very cool, man. Very, very cool. What, fun, did, uh, what character stuff. are you playing? I'm playing Anthony. Um, he's a former Boston police officer. Now, when when, al- when the aliens Did he invade- retire at the age of 18? <laughs> yeah, really, yes. <laughs> what, what do I look like the youngest police officer ever in the history yeah, of the law just, enforcement? Ever? He was a police prodigy is what he was. <laughs> he, he understood law enforcement. It's the Doogie Howser <laughs> of yeah, police yeah, shows. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me right now. Well, well the, the Doogie Howser, then in the future, I'm going to do Harold and Kumar 4 and 5. <laughs> no, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> they shoot both, both at the same time. Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. No, it's just, um, I, I think the whole deal with my character was, you know, he was a young, younger, obviously a younger, younger guy, police officer in, in, in the hood, but he was, he was a different kind of individual. I think he was trying to get away from the stigma, especially of where he grew up, you know, being in the hood, and he just wanted to do good. But then he, he works in a predominantly Irish precinct, like if you really think about it, in Boston. The show takes place in Boston. Mm-hmm. So you could imagine how crazy that was. But it's a good thing the aliens invaded, so we didn't really have to cover that aspect of it. <laughs> Is that what happens? I think that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Like, imagine covering, like, young black police officer, the only one in, like, an entire Irish precinct. I but mean, you could be a black fun. Irish uh, police officer. But Irish. I'd be Blairish. Be fucking Blairish, mate. I think there's eight of them. There's a bunch of fucking pints, yeah. I'm fucking pints, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking hard, yeah. It's fucking hard. Fucking Boston, yeah. Fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh like that. Too, yeah, I know. Saints, please, hire us. Saints, please, hire us. This is uh, this is in honor of the upcoming uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, <laughs> this is our St. Patrick's hey, Day episode. Shout out every average person. You know, I, I got the utmost. Really, Jim Sheridan is what really got me loving. You know, the Irish conglomerate. It's a short. Crazy ass Irish man right there that, that can say fuck with the best of them. <laughs> I'm telling you, that man, that man says fuck when he's on the toilet. That man says fuck when he's talking to his wife. That man says fuck when he's making a sandwich. That man just says fuck, 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 and it's just cool shit, man. Fantastic. Fuck we man. went from a G rating to an R rating just. That's all right. I, that's the, uh, that's the, that's so the who? Uh, uh, so you, you play that that character. Yeah. Uh, have you started shooting this darn thing? Yet? Yeah, it's we done. did. Uh, we, we're done. done, man. We shot 10 episodes officially for TNT. TNT, who are very nice people. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> Shout out to TNT. Shout, Shout out. out TNT. Yes. Product placement. <laughs> no, but I'll, I'll, I'll tweet that. Yeah, like, we'll, tweet, <laughs> we'll so tweet that. No, it's, um. listen, man, they're very cool. Now, there were, there were some issues with, 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 you know, obviously there's money issues and all those kind of things at first, but 
somehow we we got ten episodes filmed, man. And honestly, it looks really righteous. Now, now are you you're are you in all ten? Are you in eight? You're I'm in. I was uh, originally I was supposed to. I was guaranteed seven out of ten contractually. And then subsequently, I got eight out of ten. So thank you to the powers that be <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> liked me. Damn right. Put in the love. Put in the ten episodes. <laughs> 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 So you, uh, you've been acting a long time. Yeah, man. Uh, how old are you now? I'm, tw- I'm 27. I'll be 28 in May. Okay. So I think it's about 14 years now. How uh, 14 years? Yeah. Now, you guys have a connection, don't yeah. you? You've known each other yeah, for a well, long my, time. Yeah, my, my father is his agent, so that's just a coincidence in today's... Well, uh, well let's, let's, let's be really technical. I, his father is my father as well, because considering, you know, the way that man treats me and, and everything that that man has done for me and continues to do for me, and just, just the way the man deals with me and treats me and makes me feel... I consider Larry Goldhart to be my father as well. So How really, well? really, in really fact, fat boy is my brother. Even we are not uh, of yeah. the same complexion, yeah. I, I just uh, we are, we're more family. Yeah. And so when I say brother, it's not like you know brother. Yeah, no, that's like, good. it's that's actually family. Brother, yeah. How uh, how did you first meet Larry? Oh my goodness, I was taking I was taking an acting class at Avenue Road Art School, thanks to a lady um, that used to run the the Big Brothers organization, Lillian Gracie, I think her name was. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so she got me in there knowing that that was something I wanted to do. And it was just strictly, you know, after four program, past the time after school. And David Eisner, who's the king of the world, yeah, was dude. teaching that class. And before I knew it, Dave had me helping out, you know, teaching the improv segment of the class. And then I remember one day he just told me we we're going to go meet this agent. And I didn't really think too much of it. So we went, we had the meeting. And I just remember Larry telling me, he's like, listen, usually I audition everybody that comes in here, is what he said. I'll never forget that. And I'm like, okay, so can you give me the sides and I'll go read the sides? And he's like, no. He's like, well, Dave, you know, speaks very highly of you. And then before I knew it, Larry was my agent. And it still didn't make sense. But 14 years later, it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> but basically, you know, David Eisner, you, you could argue is just, and of course, Lillian for getting me into that class to see David, but no David, and I don't know if I'm here. Yeah. Do you know, David set up the meeting with Larry. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm here if, if, if David doesn't like me. You know, so David Eisner is responsible for a great deal of, of whatever I've accomplished and whatever I've achieved and whatever I think I can do. So, uh, you, know. you were in the Big Brothers organization. Yeah, uh, way back. Yeah, yeah and then... Uh, was the theater um, or arts program, was that provided by them at some at no, a community not, centers? How did no, you get not, into that? Not at all. Tell us um, a bit about that. Well, it, it was one of those things where she probably could have pointed me in the direction of something, mm-hmm. some kind of community, I guess, outreach program that would, that would have, say, that would include drama or whatever. But my mother and her were very cool, and, and she had a lot of respect for my mother, so I think she kind of wanted to assist me a little more than she might have assisted, you know, another kid. And I'm not trying to say she didn't want to help anybody else but me, but yeah. I really think she went, you know, the extra mile for me, and then literally got me into Avenue Road, and, and there were dues and, and you know, monthly, um, you know, payments that had to be made, and she kind of... What was it? What was Avenue got Road? Next, Avenue Road Art School. It's right. That's it's right. literally right next to Brown. Okay. On Avenue, just south of St. Clair. Okay. It's 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 very well known. Very well known. So she basically got the fees waived for me and everything. So I was able to go there for I think about six or eight months, something like that. You know, free of charge, and that's that's that because like of Lillian. You right. know, and and then subsequently, my relationship with David grew, and then subsequently I meet Larry, and then. Larry's the coolest man I think I've arguably ever known, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, 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 I'm biased, so I'm guy. not sure if I can answer that. Uh. That's <laughs> those are my guys, basically. Those are my guys. L- Larry, David Eisner, Lillian, those are my people right there. Without those three people, I don't know if I could sit here. So Larry started sending you out for jobs. And yeah. S- and, uh, so what was the first, uh, what was your first gig? I think, I think, I think I remember going to uh, Susan and Sharon Forrest's basement. And they literally put, like, I think, like, three sets of sides in front of me. I think one was, like, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Which, which as a kid, as a child actor, 
you 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 ain't nothing if you didn't read for Goosebumps. If you didn't do a Goosebumps episode, <laughs> yeah, the late episode. '90s yeah. Toronto, yeah, late '90s this Toronto is, child this is actors b- before the revamp yeah. of Degrassi. Yeah, yeah. This is that's yeah. Right. Uh, I'm not even gonna speak on what I think about Degrassi, so that's a whole <laughs> other web show. But but it, it was cool, you know. You read for the You Afraid of the Dark. And I thought that was pretty righteous. Yeah, and then eventually I got an episode of Goosebumps, and I thought that was looking righteous. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really righteous. But the um, first project I did was um, a film directed by Maya Angelou called Down in the Delta. I remember when that was casting. Yeah. It's crazy. Remember that? Yeah. And and it was just nuts the way it, it, it transpired. I went in and I read for Maya, and she goes, you're South African. This woman is just power personified, just grace. And she's like, you're South African, aren't you? And I'm like 14 years old. I'm like, well, how the hell do you know that? And she's just like, well, I know. And she's like, is your mother here? And and little did my mother know that her idol was like auditioning me in the room, right? <laughs> like we literally listened to her tapes and we read her books like all the time. And she, she asked me to call my mother in. So I'm like, yeah, right. I'm like, my mother's going to faint. So I go, I call my mom in. My mom's like, what's wrong? I'm like. Mom, Maya Angelou wants to talk to you. My mother's like, be quiet. <laughs> my mom's like, be quiet. So I bring her in the room, and my mother literally, like, her heart stopped beating. And she kind of, like, went numb and just kind of, like, fell over. And I kind of literally had to, like, help my mom up. Like, Mom, <sighs> inhale. It, was, it literally went down like that. And my mom sat there and bowed. To Maya Angelou, like after my audition, and I'm just sitting there, so embarrassed. Like, Mom, why are you bowing to this woman? Like, but but it was just like, just the way it happened it was just weird and eerie, and and yeah, that's the first project I did, and then then the Goosebumps thing happened after that, and then like here we are. Who was in that Maya Angelou movie with you? So Alfre Woodard played my mother, okay. which was like beyond righteous for right. <laughs> beyond righteous. That's just like this woman is not a joke. Like, no, she's not. Mary Alice. Uh, and, and, and for those who don't know who Mary Alice was, um, she, she was in the um, first couple of seasons of A Different World. She played the, 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 dor- the lady that kind of ran the dormitory. Mm-hmm. And then she was the second oracle in, in The Matrix, so it, uh, in um, <laughs> Revolutions. <laughs> yep. Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite uh, oracle. One. Everyone's favorite Matrix. And, yeah, and, yeah, everyone's favorite yeah, Matrix, for she sure. She played my grandmother. <laughs> um, a, gentleman, a gentleman named Al Freeman Jr. played my uncle. He was uh, the Bishop Elijah Muhammad in the Malcolm X mm-hmm. movie. Um, Esther Roll, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Florida Evans, good times. She played my aunt. And wow. Then, uh, yeah, and then Wesley Snipes was my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like this enormous <laughs> cat. Enormous uh, cat. And I'm just this little squidget dreadlock African kid. Isn't one of the Marsalises in that as well? No, no. I wish, and maybe he was, but they just didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just it's totally possible. It's to- I- I'm serious. It's totally possible. I just don't know. Mm. It's totally possible, yeah. you know. And uh, who, I'm, I'm pretty sure BB King came by set one day. Now he really didn't, but I'm just saying. The that. answer to that is always <laughs> in IMDb. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, we're so IMDbing that right now. I'm doing it right now. Slash can... blackberries. Wait, wait, wait. I'm uh, I'm promoting a product made by a company that is a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Steve, not paid by them. I'm not saying it. Jobs would love you right now. <laughs> Isn't he on leave or something? Uh, well, you can you can uh, show leave? off the rim technology. I think over there's there. some hospital issues. He's on <laughs> leave or something. I don't know. I don't He's know. okay. Me too. Well, hey, so I, do the shareholders. Well, hey, I represent that BlackBerry gang. <laughs> I've got you some show BlackBerry you? myself. BlackBerry gang. BlackBerry gang. <laughs> <laughs> they fight the apple dumpling game. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, That'd be the funniest <laughs> battle ever. <laughs> Tim Conway and Don Knotts against uh, you know what people I mean? with blackberries. Oh, it I'm just doesn't with, make any I'm going sense. With Don Knotts, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never doubt the power of the incredible Mr. Limpet. Oh, thank you. God for IMDb. I yeah. retract any confirmation that there is no Marsalis. There are no Marsalis <laughs> members no in Marsalis this film. In Down in the Delta. I'm okay, okay with so that. So let's let's talk. Uh, okay, so you started. You did these. Yeah. Uh, the goosebumps and stuff. Yeah. Uh, what about what about in school? Like you're, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you you're still in high school at this point, yeah. or, or junior high, yeah. I guess when you started. So. Uh, besides going out for actual projects, did you do any like school projects, like theaters in the schools you're going to? You know what? I did think, they have drama departments? I think, I'm, and, and to be fair, I don't remember too many productions going on in high school at the time, and I don't remember if any in junior school. Right. And I think I could be one of the few actors that was never a part of any high school or elementary junior school production ever. I never did a play in high school, and I was never presented with the opportunity. 
I didn't even know that we had that available to us, to right. be perfectly honest. So no, I never did anything in school. Um, in terms of formal training, I don't... I, I don't know if financially was I was able to do something like that. And say if say if a scholarship would have pre- presented itself, I just didn't know what outlets were available for me. I right. think at the time, and that, that I think that's what Lillian at the Big Brothers opened up for me. So you can you can give her the credit. Did you say to her that you wanted to? She was this? very aware of that. Yes, yeah. we did have that conversation, and, and and I think it came from my mother and her conversing about that. And, and, and I'm pretty sure that my mother kind of put that in. Yeah, how did you get the acting bug initially? Oh, my goodness. Well, my mother, just, just if we're, I, I don't think too many people know this. My mother immigrated to Canada from apartheid-riddled South Africa with a theater group okay. called Ipin Tombi. Now, um, it was funny. I, uh, my sister hit me up the other day, and we YouTube my mother performing on an Israeli TV show, nice. like talk show, in the late 60s. <laughs> And I watched this thing, and I'm like, dude, that's my mom. I thought that was the coolest thing. That's one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen in my existence. My mother was performing, and then, you know, homeboy, you know, was going off with the Hebrew, and he's like, you been on me. I'm like, mom? So, you know, I definitely had the genes. It's there. Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, I, I definitely get it from her, I guess, you know. And I found out that I think my father had been part of that group as well. For, for a shorter period of time. So the bloodline is there. <laughs> yeah. You know, and very proud to say so. Extremely proud to yeah. say so, for sure. Nice. Yeah, man, it's, it's just cool. But this is, this is information that I, I've been privy to recently. I didn't even know. Like, I knew she was in the theater group, but I never saw footage or never heard anything. And it's, So she didn't act once she'd uh, come to Canada? When she came, it was like, it's just all about survival. Yeah. You know, she had to, she had to work and she had to make for my father and herself. You know, type of thing, and then, and then, I think she she immigrated in about seventy nine, and then had me in eighty three. So there's only about three, four, five years in between there of her get being able to settle in and yeah. you know get acclimated. A new life, a new country, a new, a new life, place, new life. Not style. having to run from gunfire <coughs> every day, and and black police officers beating her because if they don't beat her, their families get killed. So just put that in perspective, and. I, I think it was just more about survival for her when she got here and starting a new life, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a different country. You can't expect to come here and continue whatever it was you were doing where you came from. You know, you want to you want, you want, want to start fresh. You know, I'm happy she came, man. Obviously, if she doesn't come, if, if apartheid doesn't chase her out of there, I can't, I can't be born here and I can't do the things that I've been fortunate enough to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so everything happens for a reason and I live by that. I pride myself on that, you know. What is your uh, what's the role you're most proud of playing? The role point? I'm most proud of playing at this point, holy, I'm extremely proud of um, my Flashpoint episode. That um, it's it's as as an actor, all you want is something that meaty, that you can really you know dive into and, and the range of emotions, you know, the ability to showcase what I can do on every emotional level. Is I think what that episode allowed me to do, and 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 people were able to resonate, and people were were really able to, to to feel what I was going through in that episode, and well, I find that show fascinating because the storytelling it's, it's is so it's so great. The writing is like it's it's just top notch, man. They they have amazing twists yeah. in that show, like and and yeah. they're changing the genre of that kind of hour long. Yep. No, cop so, drama. Exactly. Tell us a bit about exactly. the, the, the arc on that show. That, um, well, what happened, that okay, so, so my character, he was, you know, he's a 26-year-old, 20, you know, 26-year-old guy, young guy, and he gets wrongfully convicted of killing his best friend, you know, a girl who he actually was in love with at the time, so before she, she, she got killed. She got kidnapped and subsequently killed. So for some crazy reason, the police think that he did it. So they send him to Kingston Penitentiary for 11 years. So this is when he's like 15. Like 15 years old, they send him to Kingston. Mm. Now, if you really think about it, I don't think that's actually allowed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the Young Offenders yeah, Act probably. The offenders well, they might have a juvie do next door. <laughs> hey, like a juvie party? So they send him to Kingston. He comes out, and he's hell-bent on finding out, you know, who set him up. And he knows he didn't do it. So he goes to the courthouse, and he has a parole anklet on. And you're not allowed in the courthouse without your lawyer if you have a parole anklet on. So they didn't let me in, and I freak out. 
and I pull a gun from a cop's holster and I, you know, I hold up the courthouse. But just with the intention of, you know, wanting to clear my name, right? So, you know, show progresses. You know, I, I move throughout the courthouse. The lead character hears, hears about what's going on. And he's in the courthouse because of a situation that he had where he shot in a questionable way. It was, this it was is, uh, Hugh Dillon. Hugh Dillon's yeah. character was under an investigation for shooting. And, and they were questioning whether or not it was legit. So that's why he was in the courthouse at the time that I just so happened to be holding it up. Mm -hmm. So he comes, you know, tries to talk me down a bunch. So subsequently, he actually decides to look into my situation. So they do, and they find out that the prosecutor that was litigating was full of you-know-what, and he used not only false testimony, but he used witnesses that he paid to obviously get on the stand and lie. And when and when my character was in jail, he paid he paid my celly to 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 make up stuff. But literally it's just the this things big, you would have told things him I in would jail. I might have told him in jail. It's a big concoction of lies, basically. Mm. Just to so, keep his conviction record. Just right. to keep his conviction record. So Hugh actually and the rest of the team, the Flashpoint team, the SRU, find out that I actually didn't do it. So it's is very uplifting and, and but there's a really heavy moment when we get into uh, the courthouse where I literally break down and tell Hugh's character what happened. And, and and I think that's where he kind of starts to see not only the relationship that I had with the girl, but he really gets to see the conviction in 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 not only the way I told the story, but just just he can tell. You he, he can just he's a cop. That's what he does, do you know? So so we we end up having a cool little relationship where he comes over to, 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 the, to the cruiser at the end, and, and he asked me my name. And I don't think any cop had ever done that in the show, and I don't think that would ever happen in real life, at least that connection between the officer and, and you know. Uh, well, I like that you guys decided to, to do that through singing yeah. at the end of the show. Yeah, we, we actually, well, what happened was we were, we were about, we were this close to doing a Rodgers and, Rodgers and Amherst. Yeah, and that's, camp. it was, uh, <laughs> you know, I was, uh, I was ready to do my Dick Van Dyke chim, 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 I, I chim, thought chim, yeah, they are the sound of SWAT teams. Oh, so, yeah. And is as yeah. lucky, Hugh Dillon's uh, as lucky. Do you want to take, are we taking a break? Take a break. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll <laughs> be back with info after this. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Cast This. Cast This with Umpho Quayle. Is that how you pronounce it? How do you pronounce it? Quaho. 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 Umpho Quaho. Really and truly, it's it's Umpho Quaho. Like my mother calls me Umpho. So, and I tell people Umpho because I still like having my mother, you know, call me something that sounds different from what everybody else calls me. And obviously the correct pronunciation, but I just like knowing that she calls me the right thing and everybody else calls me something different. I I because not that. everybody can say mpo, like well, you know. <laughs> so I'm not finna put that stress on people. Well, except for the French. Well, because okay, then I'll, you can say it's mpo. Well, that same yeah. way, the <laughs> same way that that they Patrick Wall talk about it, the plot. No, say it's uh, how much you know. Dude, I, I love. I know mpo. Speaking of the French, though, speaking <laughs> of the French, like I, whenever I talk about like hockey playoffs now, like I hear Patrick Wall, he'd be like, "Oh, it's time for the playoff." You don't even use the S anymore. It's like it's like fuck S. It's like, oh, the playoff. Time for the playoff. So that's how I say it now. It's just like oh, I'm I'm going to watch the playoff. I love it. It's <laughs> just one. That's just one. one. It's <laughs> the playoff. It's a long. It takes a while, but it's just <laughs> one. Six <laughs> month. Playoff. You know what I mean? The playoff. I love it. You gotta love it, right? Why? As far as I'm concerned, you can do it every once. <laughs> Are you are you uh, uh so you're out there auditioning? Do you have anything lined up? Are you, are you booked on um, anything right now? No, dude, nothing lined up. Um, yeah. I'm actually trying to get some stuff written right now. Um, I got this really righteous concept that that um, I'm trying to get written right now. And a writer, I have a writer that sent me um, another concept for um, I'm not gonna say like a bad boys cop type of thing. Would you that, be Martin Lawrence? Yes, okay. I think I would have to be because well, if Casey Collins. Who I plan to 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 cast opposite myself? He does kind of admit he a bit might of a Will be the Smith. Will. Th yeah. I think just to the naked eye, <laughs> he's Will. <laughs> <laughs> and to the other naked eye, I'm Martin. Way better looking, but no, no, it, it would kind of be like that. But um, I think there would be a lot a lot more depth to not only the concept, the story, and everything. There's mm -hmm. a lot more going on. The writing is is. Yeah, you talked to me about that I think last time I yeah, saw it. Yeah, uh, 
don't don't spill the beans. No, I, 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 I definitely will not spill the it's beans. Pretty good. It's, yeah. it's pretty good. Because otherwise, yeah. there's yeah. Like, no. Know, but that's the drama. The, that's the drama is what I spilt to you. Um, is this something else? Yeah, there's another one. So the oh, the, nice. the, the, the cop thing is is I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll let you read the synopsis after. It's right pretty on. righteous stuff. I, some wild stuff there. Well, of course. Yes. Of course. <laughs> it is. Of course. Sure. sure what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it written and then maybe I can do the movie and just speak like this for the entire film. <laughs> Sean Connery's retired. We need an actor. So well, hey, it was, I was also in the hunt for Red October. I yeah. was supposed to have a Russian accent, but I just spoke like this for the whole film. I'm a little bit lazy. And said I was Russian. But the best part is that <laughs> I'm a can... Slavic man. Yeah. Well, I was also in the entrapment with Catherine Zeta-Jones. <laughs> I played best... her love interest. Of course. <laughs> the best yes. part about I got him... to touch her booty. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> He can speak in any, any whatever accent. He can speak in his own accent, yeah. say whatever he is, and when you're watching it, you still believe he it is what he says. It just flies. Yeah, for some reason it's it like, works. He says he's a Russian? Of course is he's a Russian. Is it just me or does it work? It works. Have you seen the one where he plays a, a, a sheik? He plays an Arabian sheik what that kidnaps Candace Bergen. What movie is the, this? The Lion and the... Can I say I had a... Cr- like, I thought I had like super crush on Candace Bergen back in the day. In the Murphy Brown era? Murphy Brown but era. And even before that. earlier than that? Yeah, like, like carnal knowledge? And well, that, that was like, that was like yeah. my Kathleen Turner days. Yeah. Like I think after I saw V.I. Warshawski, I literally think I wanted to run away with Kathleen. Turner. Um, well, now, that now, now not so some much. Sort of legacy. Now, <laughs> not now, not so much. Yeah, really. It's uh, funny. I <laughs> wanted to do that when I saw Estelle Getty and stop where my mom. Was <laughs> <laughs> I, but uh, I mean, sadly, that, that did not come thing to pass. I've pa- ever heard that in did, life. Sadly, that did not come to pass. <laughs> uh, That's so wrong. That's so <laughs> low. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Funny but wrong. V.I. Warshowski. Yeah. I, I don't what think a, anyone has ever name. summoned that name <laughs> since I just that thought, movie came out. I just thought she was so hot as a cop. And I mean just like the, just the way she kind of controlled the screen and, and kind of ran shit. You know, and and then the, the, the you know the, the, the business outfit. Well, the, you're also talking like some severe, like some heavy shoulder, shoulder pads. Well, well, hold on. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's be fair right now. It no, was the era. No disrespect. Miss Kathleen Turner. Then I was like, yes. Now, not so much. Like I think now her voice is deeper than mine. It is. It is I have you uh, have deep. you seen episodes of uh, California? Think, yeah, I think now her voice is, she is on deeper that show than now? mine. She she has a phenomenal role on that. Really? Uh, yeah. She, I don't watch it enough. She just looks like she, she comes looks in like a she, linebacker uh, now. She oh. comes in as a. Is it as just a, me or <laughs> she's an agent? <laughs> Am I worried she could block for my running back? Like what? <laughs> she's a she's a literary agent on that show, and she is like it is a spectacular character. Nice, nice. I'll nice. have to check. I haven't. Yeah. I've only seen the first. You know season what? Of that show. You know what? I just know that uh, Duchovny had some issues playing himself. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> Taylor Leone was like not feeling that. <laughs> and subsequently, she took him back though, right? I think so. I think she took him back. That's I, love. And Tina Turner said, "What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it." Got to do with it. You just don't have her legs. No. Not so. You saw that, too? You saw that, too? Tina Turner has the greatest legs of all time. Oh, and and was, that uh, went to serious her current age yeah, right now. I think so. She's still... But yeah, that, that footage I tell of you the what, she, Tina Turner review. I tell you what, she's no Raquel stuff. Welch. I, I think I saw some Raquel Welch. I was like, I think I might still mess with Raquel Welch. Now, I saw Tina Turner live a few years ago. She had Lionel Richie, so it was like a comeback tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she was here in, uh, at the Sky Dome, or I guess. Yeah, I, I don't care. It's Sky Dome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah really, Sky, eh? Always be Sky Dome to me. It's it, or, it, or, me too, dude. But now, yeah. I'm cr- now I'm trying to figure out whether it was the ACC or not. Correct. But, but, wow. Uh, I, I just, no, it had to be the ACC. <laughs> so <laughs> I just don't. Sticky. That's sticky. Um, <laughs> but that woman is, I mean, I, I guess at that point in the, sh- like when she's late, mid to late 60s. Yeah. She is phenomenal. She is still a brick Phenom- house. Like I'm like she's still uh, a brick house, dude. She's still a brick house. That's that's a serious woman right there, and she'll always be the one, you know. She'll, but dude, she'll but always dude, be my thunder. Back girl. to the Raquel Welch thing. I saw I saw Raquel Welch the other day, and I'm like, okay, sixty something year old woman isn't supposed to look like that. Uh, or at least that attractive. Yeah. No yeah. disrespect to any six. There are about woman. three or four amazing like uh, actresses who actresses who, who, who in the sixties take care like, of themselves. Uh, I don't know if you know who Claudia Cardinale is, but no. she is aged very well. She's in Once Upon a Time in the West. Wow. With, uh, and she very very beautiful. See, I was uh, I was like Maureen O'Hara everything. Like I had the biggest <laughs> Maureen O'Hara crush. Like after I saw Parent Trap, I was just like, God damn, that is a fine ass <laughs> woman. 
Beautiful. Just that's all I can say. That's a fine ass woman. And then like the sentence stopped after that. <laughs> <laughs> and then fantasies of Don Knotts. Crap. You know, and it, well, 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 me and Don Knotts like riding on horses, shooting people. I guess like no, the, Don Knotts me, beating hands up down, people. Even today, and Margaret. Oh yeah? my God! Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. And Margaret, unbelievable. I, I still, I still love me some Ingrid gorgeous. Bergman in Casablanca. That's yeah, like yeah. naturally beautiful, you know. And for the lack of color, I just well, I just you know, like, for the amount of work that a lot of these actresses put into their into their body or whatever, yeah. and, you know, like to maintain, <laughs> they put in their lips or whatever. But Anne Margaret, uh, from back to Cincinnati Kid up yeah. until like to Grumpy Old Man, yeah. it's like yeah. she is spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. And even if she had work done, you can't tell. Like she just looks like yep. she's aged so gracefully, but also she's gorgeous. You know what? Um, um, she's not sixty, but I really think Michelle Pfeiffer looks incredible still. <laughs> I haven't, Dude, I haven't seen her recently. Dude, she looks awesome. There's always grease too for me. Like I'm serious. Yeah, I can't. I can't <laughs> rock with that either. Don't worry. Don't worry. We totally agree. She straddles a, a ladder agree. and sings. You know, it's like you can't I, go wrong. No, I agree. Directed by Ken, Canada's own Ken Finkelman. <laughs> get out of here! I yeah, didn't even he know wrote that. It. He wrote it. He wrote it or directed it. Man, I gotta get he, my uh, homework. He was up, the what? go-to guy for sequels. He did Airplane too. I as love well. that. Yeah. Uh, is that the worst way to be remembered? You're the go-to guy for like brilliant like movie sequels like yeah I don't know, I hey, our guest that next week who started off oh. as an amazing uh director not to say that he isn't a good director but he ended up as 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 the years progressed also doing sequels uh, sequels, sequels. Uh, sydney fury who did superman oh, 4 superman my goodness, 4 my goodness that's my guy have you uh, worked with ladies, uh, sydney fury ladies and gentlemen i was fortunate enough to um to to do detention um, Dolph Lundgren, uh, directed by Sidney Fury. Um, I did two films with him, actually. I did a but film, didn't, the I film think called Partners. I did Partners first. Yeah. And then... What's Partners? Partners in Action. Okay. With Armand Asante. Oh. Which I thought was fucking righteous, man. That's a serious dude right there, huh? Nice man. But you're serious. an actor's actor. It's not a joke. And then Sid, you know, little 68-year-old Jewish man hunched over, walking around, talking about, hey, are you serious? Can we go already? Stop joke, man. I said action. Come on. Don't be for Glenn, please. You're, you're holding up my whole set here. Come on, hey. Yeah, I directed Superman 4, not 3. Come on. Come on. 3, 4, not 3. Get it right. But we did it. And then, and then, you know, he had the detention thing after we did Partners. So he, uh, but he left that ill, and then Dolph Lundgren continued and did the directing for that. No, right? I think that was for a film that um, uh, Corey Sevier just did with them. No, I'm pretty is sure that, we finished. That happened? Pretty yeah, sure we finished. He finished detention. I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, maybe. How long maybe, ago I, was I, again? I, you could be right. How you long ago right. did you do detention? Detention was in '03. Okay. We shot it in '03. Um, it was myself. It was Casey Collins, Dove Tiefenbach. Wherever you at, boy. He's I see on you. Uh, Detroit 187. He Is he a really? Yeah, he good for him. Episodes, yeah. I saw Majunder on there, too. Yeah, well, Majunder. 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 Sean Majunder. You know what? That's a seri- That's a very solid uh, individual, Sean Majunder. Yeah. I just want to shout that guy out real quick, man. That's that's just a really nice guy. Talented. Just cool, cool yeah, ass. He's a super guy. Dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just a big fan of his on, on every level. Human. You know, actor, just comedic. That's just the guy. He's got it. You know, that's that's yeah. my guy right He's there. East Coast Indian, playing an American in Detroit. It's so good. <laughs> it's called great. acting, everybody. It's called it's acting. Great. He's an actor. Uh, I think we got to wrap this. Is great. We got to wrap this stuff up. Am I right? It's about yeah, a half hour. You want to wrap it up? Hey, shout out, shout out, fine ass Jennifer Beals on Chicago Code. Just by the way, I watched <laughs> that the other day, and I will still run away with Jennifer Beals like today. You dig? Like Before that. the next time I see you, I'm going to do some research and see Please which do. older ladies I would like to. Run you know what? <laughs> let, let me just. What do I got? Strangely in my enough, brain? I don't think this is a conversation we're going to. You know be what? With you know what? Next <laughs> week. <laughs> Let's, I, 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 me personally, I'm no, a, just for my own interest. Well, of course. Yeah. I'm good with Angela Bassett. Florence Henderson. I'm, I'm good with Angela Bassett. I'm okay with Angela. Bassett. I'm like more than happy. Although I'm okay with Alfie Woodard too. So. You know what? She, she's actually yeah. Alfie still got it. We yeah. did a, we did the pilot last year. Um, the, uh, the little, this little medical pilot we did, and and she didn't even remember me. So I go up to her, and obviously I hadn't seen her in, like, in you know, 11 years. I walk up to him like, hey, Alfrey, um, my mom says hi. She's like, that's very nice. Who's your mother? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, so I, who's your mother? I'm like, Cooley, Delta? And I swear she shrieked so loud, I think my eardrum stopped working right at that moment. Hmm. That's why so you're from, only wearing one so headset. I can only hear you from the right side, thanks to Alfrey Woodard. But no, it was cool. We laughed it up after she remembered me. It's the whole, you're so big. You're so big. 
I'm like, yes, okay. I am. Yeah, Tar does that. <laughs> That's a whole <laughs> other <laughs> web show, though. You <laughs> did? <laughs> Oompa. 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 No, really and truly, if you see me, just go. <laughs> and just jump real high. And I know you're calling me. Beat the crap out of us. And I know you'll call. I know you'll be calling me. Just go. Oh, Oompa. So, yo, in Africa, they got drive-bys now. <laughs> Anybody that wasn't here seeing that, you'll never understand that, but it's okay. That's fine. I'm just going to try and translate your name into semaphore. And oh, then, wow. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll master that. And then we'll <laughs> hey, see what happens. Hey, guys, guys, thanks for having Thank me. Thank you man. very much for being for here. Uh, so, so uh, again, welcome. Uh, this has been Cast This. Cast yes. This. Uh, hey. Ryan and James. And I will be back. You will be back. Yeah, and you I have more stories back. to tell. And I thanks got, so I much for stuff, coming bro. by Thank you. today. All right, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>